Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Learn with Dr. G. That's me. Today, we will be featuring this lovely headband that my daughter asked me to wear today. Um, she made sure that I was wearing it before I left the house, so I need to show her that I am still wearing it. Uh, today, we will be talking a little bit about PowerShell. And if you want to follow along, as always, we do have a Microsoft Learn module that you can follow along with. So I'm going to be pasting it here in all of the chats um, just to make sure that that y'all have access to it. And um, yeah, let's go ahead and get started. So as always, remember that this is our code of conduct, essentially stating to be kind to each other, be kind to me, um, I will be kind to you. Our goal here is to learn and share and have fun. So let's go ahead and get started. All right. Hello, everyone. Good evening. All right. So today, like I mentioned, we're going to be talking a little bit about PowerShell. Last week on Learn with Dr. G, um, we were talking about Bash. If you missed that, we do have a whole video series of these live streams, as well as 15 to 30 minute recaps, uh, where I kind of do a, a new video that I recap everything. Um, you can find that um, we can find them at aka.ms slash learn with Dr. G slash W-Y-D-L-I-S underscore videos. That's what you didn't learn in school. This is part of that what you didn't learn in school video series um, where we're going through and just talking about all of the different um, types of things that aren't often taught in traditional education settings, whether they're universities, colleges, high schools, uh, boot camps, or even kind of formal courses. It's kind of the stuff that is assumed that we know. And part of that is PowerShell, is Bash. And so last week we went over Bash. And one of the questions that I did get asked last week was, what is the difference between Command, PowerShell, Bash, et cetera? Um, and I did want to share with y'all this really amazing short video uh, that's up on channel nine that you can visit at aka.ms slash lwdg slash cmnd powershell bash um, and this is a really short video that just talks about the primary differences between the three so i encourage you to check those out all right just making sure i'm not missing things already um perfect so okay cool um actually Making sure. Okay, cool. Um, sorry, there's like five different places where chat can come in. So I'm making sure that I don't miss any of those. So like I said, today we're going to be talking about Shell. I mean, PowerShell. I am going to be on a Windows machine and I am using Windows PowerShell. So that is what we'll be using. Um, this is that lovely learn module that walks you through all of the pieces, uh, as well as installing PowerShell and kind of getting ready to get started. So Let's talk a little bit about this um, first of all. So PowerShell not only is a command line shell, and let me just take this off. <laughs> PowerShell not only is a command line shell, but it is also a scripting language all wrapped into one. So we talked a little bit last week um, about Bash and how it is essentially that interface where you can type something into a terminal and then bash handles kind of communicating with the machine beneath it. Um, PowerShell also has that, but it also is a scripting language all in one. So there are some rules about the commands or we call them commandlets in PowerShell uh, that we will see shortly. Historically, PowerShell was pretty much the shell that you would use on Windows machines, and Bash was pretty much the shell that you would use on um, Linux or Mac, because Mac is uh, uh, Unix-based. But that being said, nowadays, it's pretty much kind of up to you. Um, it depends on what you're trying to do. It depends on what your goals are, uh, what your restrictions are, et cetera. So one really neat thing is that um, PowerShell is built on .NET Core, which means that it is uh, cross-platform now. And um, Bash, as we saw last week, you can use with WSL, which is Windows Subsystem for Linux, which we will be talking about in the future. So at this point, there are some very strong reasons why you might want to use PowerShell, some strong reasons why you might want to use Bash. It might be a preference thing. It really depends on what your workflow is, what your organization or company or community is using, um, and what features you're looking for. 
But the neat thing about PowerShell is that you can actually build your own commandlets because it is just uh, like a language. It is um, like you can use .NET Core. .NET Core is open source. Like it's just this really huge open ecosystem that you can kind of go into. And that's what makes it pretty powerful. Um, one of the biggest differences, yes, definitely, hello. One of the biggest differences with um, PowerShell and Bash is that PowerShell tends to work with, sorry, my hands are a little dry. I saw the wash hands um, comment on YouTube and it reminded me that I just washed my hands and my hands were really dry and it was distracting me. Um, one of the biggest differences is that Bash, we were really focused on kind of the file system and different input for different commands yielded different output. And while we could still do this kind of piping of input to output, like we saw, um, it did really, it was very much dependent on kind of what you were trying to do. Of course, with PowerShell, that's gonna be the same. But one of the biggest differences is that PowerShell operates on objects versus text. So even if what is displayed as an output of a PowerShell command or commandlet, pretty much command commandlet, it's gonna be the same. I'm talking about CMD LET commandlet. Um, but essentially, anytime you execute a PowerShell command, even if it kind of outputs and it looks just like text, that is also an object or that is an object. And so there are other things that you can call on upon that object. So that's one of the biggest differences um, as well as kind of the superpowers of PowerShell. And that's why building your own commandlets uh, can be very powerful because it really is object kind of based. <clears throat> All right. If you haven't already uh, installed it, <clears throat> the learn module, which is linked down below, has links for where to install it. If you are on a Windows 8 machine or later, it's likely that PowerShell is already installed um, on your machine. <clears throat> and so you might want to update it, uh, but you should already have it. If you are on an older version of Windows or you are on Mac or, or some Linux machine, then again, there are various ways of installing PowerShell and they're linked right there. There's also a really great VS Code extension. So if you are, if you do kind of get excited about using PowerShell and want to write your own commandlets, um, you can actually install the PowerShell extension for Visual Studio Code, which will basically just kind of help you author those PowerShell scripts. Um, and it allows you to run the commands that uh, that we're going to use in this module, but like within Visual Studio Code. So you could also just use Visual Studio Code instead of installing it on your machine. All right, checking out other posts. Okay, sorry, just making sure I don't miss questions over here. All right, perfect. So let's start writing some commands. I think that would be fun. Um, let's get into it. The first thing that we're going to explore is um, just making sure that we've got PowerShell installed and that we're ready to, to ready to roll and that we know which version we're using. So here is, oh God, I, you know, I'm gonna try to zoom in a little bit more. Let me just see what it kind of looks like. Hopefully that'll look okay. Let me know if you need me to zoom in more, um, but yeah. Hello, Hamza, Microsoft Learn Student Ambassador, welcome. Um, Azure using both terminal. I don't know what you mean by Azure. Azure does have um, like terminals that you can use. Uh, I'm just doing it right here on my desktop. So yeah, but yeah, I believe you're right. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. The very first thing that we're going to do is just see which version we have installed here on our machine. Uh, full disclosure, I did run this PowerShell as administrator on Windows. I did that because I needed to update help, which we'll get to later. Excuse me. Um, and uh, uh, so you may need to run this as administrator, which you just go into the application and click run as administrator. Um, but uh, for the majority of these commands, you will not need to do that. There is a question on how to zoom it. I am assuming you mean the, the PowerShell terminal that's on your proper your own machine. Um, I click control and then uh, scroll in or out, scroll up or down rather. 
The only caveat is that sometimes then this gets cut off by my window, which gets a little annoying. So if that happens, we'll we'll deal with it then. All right, just making sure that we're all on the same page here. All right, perfect. Um, so the first thing that we're gonna do is see what we have installed here. So I'm gonna go and type in this command, ps version table. And this prints out what appears to be a text response that is a table of names to values. So it is our PowerShell version, which I'm running 5.1, the edition, this is the desktop edition, other compatible versions, et cetera, et cetera. Now, if you recall, everything related to PowerShell input and output is an object. So we can, just like with bash, press up to go to the previous command that we had typed, um, or even even higher. Uh, right now we've only typed one, so we can go up to the previous command and we can call things on this object. So for example, I can say of the output of PowerShell version table, this, this command here, I only want you to give me the value for PowerShell version. So that's gonna, that's gonna give me this. So it's got um, the major build, the minor build, the specific build, and then which revision it is. So that's 5.1, 1862, 11.71. So that's just kind of like a quick demonstration of that. Now, I said that PowerShell wasn't only the shell, but also a scripting language. And one thing about languages is that there are rules. And with PowerShell, commands have these specific rules. And the rule is that we have a verb and we have a noun. So every command that we're going to be running is either, it will have a verb, then a dash, and then a noun. So um, good evening, Jamie. So for example, we could run get verb. And get verb is uh, technically <laughs> a verb get here and a noun, which is verb. Which is kind of funny that our noun is verb. Um, but we have two things here. We have a verb, which is get, and we have a noun, which is verb. And so our commandlet or our command here for PowerShell is going to be to get all of the verbs that we have access to on this on this machine. So if I run get verb, I'm gonna be getting a lot, <laughs> a lot of verbs. These are all of the verbs that I currently have, um, have on this machine. So the verb and then the group. So there's add, clear, close, push, checkpoint, merge, confirm, stop, suspend, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, one of the uh, primary, sorry, let me just, why is this? There we go. Um, one of the commands or commandlets that you might use is get command, because that's going to give us all of the actual commands that we could use or commandlet, a list of all of those. So get verb is gonna tell us just all of the verbs that we have available to us, but get command, it's gonna be an even longer list <laughs> and it's gonna list all of the commands that we have access to here. In addition to uh, listing them all, it's also gonna give us the versions of them. And I'm gonna zoom out just a bit here um, so that we can, we can kind of potentially scroll up. Do, 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 do. You don't necessarily have to be running these on your machine. Um, it's part of why I'm running them on mine. Do I even, did it, yeah, there it goes. All right, um, scroll up to the top. So this is also a table that has command type, the name for the command, the version and the source. So these are all of the commands, but that perhaps isn't super useful. Um, there we go. So let me zoom back in a bit. Uh, with PowerShell, just like with Bash, we do have commands like clear and list and things like that. So uh, I can type clear, but I can also do CLS, which is the more traditional or kind of the original clear here. Um, so CLS will clear my PowerShell terminal window. Um, so get command was nice because we could get this huge list of commands, but it's not super nice because it's just this huge list of commands. So one command in particular that is useful is get help. 
And this is basically similar to how we did man and then a command name in Bash. We did man and then ls would give us the manual or the help documentation for the command ls. Here, get help is basically all of the help documentation. Um, in this case, get help is a command in it of itself. See, this is that um, zooming that I was talking about. Goodness gracious. Um, it'll give us the, uh, basically kind of the man pages or the manual or the help documentation for the get help function. Um, but we could also do things like get help with a particular command. So I could run get help. And then what I could pass into it as the input might be get command, which is another command, right? So I'm asking to get the documentation or get help on the command get command. And that's why you can see that this syntax highlighting is different. Get help is the command that we are executing and therefore it's yellow. Get command is the input object for that commandlet, which is in white. So this will give us very similar to what we saw in bash. It'll give us the name, a short description, the syntax for it, a much longer description, related links that might be useful for us, um, any other remarks. You can also get more examples, which we'll show you in just a minute. All right, hang on, there's a lot of other questions. Um, yes, my main problem with PowerShell is that there are so many things in PowerShell, very true. Um, uh, PS is a great uh, little debugging tool for .NET when you want to debug stuff and there's no dev environment. Very good point. Um, yes, a lot of uh, a lot of commandlets with the Azure module. <laughs> it's true. Um, and yes, you can choose to select a specific command type. Um, and is there a command format? Yes. So we are going or oh, format C. I don't remember what that one does in MS-DOS. I wouldn't be able to tell you, sorry. <laughs> I don't have a ton of experience with MS-DOS. Um, but we are gonna do some formatting later. I don't know if it's the same format that you're talking about. I feel like you're talking about formatting, not the output, but talking about formatting the C drive, uh, which is not what we're gonna be doing. Sorry, can't help you there. Um, but yes, you can actually choose specific things. So the whole get command, um, as we saw, will, print out all of the commands that are available to us. Um, and sorry, uh, is there a Discord server for Learn with Dr. G? No, there isn't. Um, I, I actually did make one, but I have not actually done anything with it yet, so I apologize. Um, but uh, potentially in the future, we will have one. And then do we need to set execution policy? Um, that you need to do, so that was part of the Learn documentation. If you hadn't, um, I believe that's only if you are not running this on a Windows machine, do you need to set execution policy? And that would be a part of the install instructions. So potentially, yes. Good questions. Hello. Yeah, formatting the hard drive on the computer that you're on. That's what I assumed that they were talking about, but I, uh, yes. And yes, you can make your own commands. I'm not gonna be going over making your own commands today, um, but that is possible. Um, export to CSV samples. Uh, we'll see if I get to that. I do want to cover kind of the basics first. But if not, I am doing a recap video I'm recording tomorrow, so I can show that as an example. Um, perfect. Okay, so we have this get command commandlet. Um, and one thing that we can do is specify the types of commands that we want to be able to see here. And just like with Bash being able to use those wildcards when we're doing a grep or we're doing an LS or a move or anything like that, we can do the same thing here with command input. And so for example, we can have um, a flag noun, uh, and then we can specify that we only want to list the commands where the noun includes, well, specifically starts with file and has anything else after it. Okay, so that star is anything else. Um, there's nothing before the file, so it's going to specifically start with file. So if we run this, um, we actually get a smaller set. Oh, that's interesting. Wait, did I change that? This definitely should have only printed the ones that start with file. 
Oh, sorry. Yes, they did. Oh, my brain. I started looking at the verb. Remember, everything has a verb and a noun. So we're not going to be worrying about what the verb starts with. We're only going to be worrying about what the noun starts with. And the noun here all starts with file, where there are um, other things after the word file. Perfect. Um, is there a way to elevate PowerShell without opening a new one as administrator? That's a good question. I almost always open as administrator. If someone knows PowerShell and can answer that question, um, I will also look it up. But yes, um, that would be a great question to ask. I almost always just open it as administrator. Um, so yeah, uh, get command. Oh, sorry. So this will list only all of the commandlets that start with file for the noun. So it's going to tell us the the verbs, write, block, clear, debug, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but where the file, sorry, the noun starts with the word file. We could do the same thing just like we did with bash commands. We can do the same thing here where we say, I specifically want to flag the verb to be get. And then I want the noun to start with file. So these are only going to list excuse me, the five commands that have the verb get and start with the word file. And we could do the same thing that we did before because I I always hate it when there's an example and then they don't show like, well, could you have the star before it? Of course you can. This is just a, a wild card. We can put it wherever it makes sense. Um, so we can say it, it has to have the word file in it. And we can see here that we get a slightly larger um, listing of all of the commands that have the verb get, but with the with the word file somewhere, um, somewhere in the name. So these ones all start with file. This one, it actually just has profile. So maybe not exactly what we're looking for, but this one, for example, storage file server and um, this open file. So you can see that uh, you can just use these wild cords as they make sense. Um, this person is saying start process PowerShell dash verb run as. Thank you so much. I think that's the answer to the, can we elevate a PowerShell um, window without uh, having to open a new one as administrator. Okay, let me make sure. Perfect. All right. So that's a little bit about just kind of the the uh, syntax for running commandlets or commands inside of PowerShell, where you have the command name. Um, you might have some flags like we did in Bash. Uh, you might have some input or 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 some. Um, arguments there, like we do here with dash verb as the option and the argument is get, dash noun as the option and the argument is this um, asterisk file asterisk. Oh, it does open a new window though, the start process PowerShell dash verb run as. I didn't think that there was a way to, that makes sense, start process PowerShell but run as. Um, I didn't think that there was a way to just to, to reinitiate the one that you're in as administrator. That's why I threw it to you all. Thank you. All right. So let's go ahead and CLS or clear our workspace um, so we can explore this a little bit more. So one thing that we can do is run get help specifically on a command. So we did this earlier with get help, get command. Um, but we can do this here with get help, get file. And of course, just like with bash, um, we can do tab completions here. So in this case, I started typing file. It, I did a tab. It completed to the um, next likely one in alphabetical order. If I continue to type tab here, you'll see that it'll it'll go through all of the get verb dash file with whatever is at the end. So get file hash. This is going to give us that name, synopsis, syntax, etc. Um, and we saw earlier that there was an option for examples. Uh, you can see that here to see examples type this. So if we type that, we actually do get these examples of how you might want to use this particular commandlet, specifically get file hash. So one is to compute the hash value for a file. So you might run this commandlet and this would be the output for it. Here's example two, et cetera, et cetera. All right. Just triple checking on all of our questions. Perfect. Yes, can we explain the verb noun once again, please? Sure. So essentially, um, 
like with bash when we had command and then we had an optional list of options um and then we had an optional list of arguments so that's what it looked like whenever we were running any type of command in bash we have a similar type of thing with with powershell where we have a command um but the command is always a verb and then a noun and then you might have an optional list of options with an optional list of of um of arguments right and so the verb it, it's essentially the syntax to this ling the scripting language like the verb itself is going to represent the type of thing that you're doing so for example if we were to do get command um dash noun file we can see here that uh, we have some verbs that are things like write. So this is going to write. And then the noun is the file system cache. So the thing that we're going to point, perform the verb on is the noun, right? Um, so you might want to get a file hash or write the file system cache or block the file share access, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so that's just basically kind of the, the syntax or structure to commandlets in PowerShell. Um, is there a setting to avoid having capitalized commands? Yeah, so if you run get command, um, let's do dash verb, and then let's do um, file star here, you can see that it doesn't actually run uh, because the name of the command is that capital get dash command, um, capital command. That is also where the commandlet like definition file is stored in a file named that. Um, you'll see that if you start to write your own PowerShell commands. But there are ways in which you can do it in a sense. For example, we do have get help here. And get help, if we kind of scroll up maybe, no. That's the problem with zooming in a little bit is that save help. Blah, 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 blah. Nope. Okay. Um, get help. I'm trying to find something specific. Syntax, blah, 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 blah. Description, related links, remarks. Okay. Um, so uh, there is, um, oh, here we go. Get help. That's not what I wanted. Well, anyways, there is something called alias. So for example, there is an alias for get help, which is lowercase help. And you can actually specify aliases for various commandlets, um, especially if you're writing your own, you can actually specify that what you want your aliases to be for that commandlet. So for example, help get file hash here um, will still give us that same thing as get help with that file hash. Um, get file hash input argument would give us. Okay. Okay, sorry, just reading through. What's the difference between a commandlet and a function? That's a good question. Um, I don't know how to exactly answer that. I mean, essentially a commandlet is a, 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 like a, a script um, wherein you might have functions that define that commandlet. Uh, but it's basically um, a command that you would run. I don't know how to better explain that. I need to, I need to find a better ex explanation for that. I'm going to write that down along with the other ones that we've had for my recap video tomorrow so I can have a concise one and not waste a bunch of time just rambling. Um, commandlet versus function. Okay. You need an alias that match maps onto bash commands. Yes, um, that is that is possible. Okay, let me just, there are two new questions over here. I have a later version of PowerShell that doesn't need to be capitalized. Awesome, so it looks like if you are running a later version of PowerShell, um, perhaps that capitalization issue is not as much of an issue. All right, there was another question that I wanted to answer earlier, which was, oh yeah, the CVS, right? Okay, CSV. Okay, perfect. 
So um, we showed the examples. Um, you can also do things like this is where we start to to kind of start. Uh, well, still still kind of providing input, but we've got get help here. We can specify that the name is get file hash. Okay, so you can run get help get file hash, or you can run get help where you specify that the name is get file hash. And so what is essentially happening here is is you are running the get help command with the option that name is get file hash. So you're only getting returned the get file hash. When we're running the get help command and then we're running with the argument of get file hash, we're almost saying get get help command and then search for this throughout that. Um, we'll get to that in a little bit when we start to, to kind of string more things together. Um, but I just wanted to show you there are kind of three ways of getting help. So there was this one that we just did, get help, dash name, which is the option of specifying this name, get file hash. Um, there's also help get file hash using the alias. And then there's get help get file hash like this, which is kind of the more traditional, like this is my command, here's my argument. All right. Let's do some other things. So in the bash example, we were talking about like processes and being able to like understand what processes are running. So one thing that we can do here, just like there is we can get process. This is gonna list all of the processes running on my machine. Awesome, thank you so much for this ginormous list of things. Um, and I'm gonna do the really great thing of just looking at the very bottom and seeing that I've got Zoomit running. Zoomit is the application that I use to do things like this. Hello, Zoomit, thank you so much for being so helpful, I appreciate it. Um, so one thing that we can do is we can actually specifically get the Zoomit process. So for example, get process where the name is Zoomit. Here, we can see that we've got a bunch of information about it right here. And one other thing that we can do is then pipe that output and say, I want to get member for this. And so um, basically, um, a function spec is specified directly in PowerShell in script module. Yeah, so the function, Right, exactly. So, so a commandlet ca is written using the functions that are written in the script that you built the commandlet on. Exactly. Um, yes. Okay. Cool. Sorry. Just reading through all of these things. Um, let me grab this other thing for you that I wanted to show you. Where did you go? Um, by the way, one of the reasons uh, I needed to run it as administrator was I needed to, to update help um, because when I ran get help, it was saying, oh, sorry, I don't know what you're talking about. Um, so that is why I, I ran that. Um, but here we go, get process. Um, so we can pipe get member, which is a commandlet, from, or sorry, um, all of the members, events, and methods, that's what get member will do. And we can see that this essentially is saying that the Zoomit process is of type process. And here are like all of the things that are related to this Zoomit process, all of the properties and just all of the members that are related to this particular Zoomit process. Okay. Um, so for example, one thing that we could do is, sorry, get help. I got distracted because I'm trying to follow my notes, but then I got distracted by the learn module because I want to make sure it aligns with it. And I forgot that I had done some extra stuff here. Um, so um, another way that we could run this, this is specifically, so, okay, that's where I got, I got confused. Okay. So here we're just getting one specific process, which has the name Zoomit, and then we're getting all of the kind of member fields for that. 
we ran get process, but another thing that we could do is run get command here and find out all of the different things that we could run related to a process. So parameter type process. This is the one that I didn't have in my notes and that's why I got confused, apologies. Um, so get command parameter type process is specifically going to say all of the commands wherein the parameter type, so the thing that you're going to pass into that command, the argument is going to be of type process. And so we can see here that get process is one of those commands and we did pass in a specific process to the get process command. Um, but there are all of these other ones as well. So you can debug, um, you can get info, you can stop the process, you can wait, et cetera. And so this is similar to the, the process commands that we ran in bash last week where we were able to start or stop or just understand what is happening related to a process. If you wanna be able to do that, number one, you can get that specific process and get information about it. But number two, um, you can also debug a specific process or stop a specific process. And this is how you interact with that. Remember that all of these shells were written um, or like the purpose of these shells originally were when we didn't have a mouse and any graphical interface. And so if you wanted to be able to right click on a process and say stop kill process or something, that wasn't a thing. So if you needed to be able to stop it, anything that you need to do within your computer, you can essentially do here. Um, I'm looking at this, this is harder than HTML, CSS, PHP and JavaScript combined. Potentially, I mean, I think I think that there are. I think each language is, is can be can be challenging. Um, so I I don't I'm not saying that you are wrong. I'm just saying that boy is <laughs> JavaScript, HTML, CSS, and PHP hard for me. <laughs> All right. Um, another way that you can access specific processes uh, is through this somewhat convoluted way. Um, but basically, a, a, uh, sorry, I got distracted again. Okay, so basically, we could run this command here, which let me, there we go. Um, so basically, what we're saying is, hey, I want to grab a PowerShell object where the name is zoom it, and I wanna pipe that into the get process command. So what we did before was get process where the name is zoom it, right? These two commands right here are the same. What we're saying here is that I'm gonna take this bit of information, so I'm gonna first find the PowerShell object where the name is zoom it. And I'm gonna pipe that into the get process command. This one here is saying that I want to call the get process command with the, where the name specifically is zoom it. Hello. And that's why they output the same information because they're called, these two commands are doing the exact same thing. There's gonna be reasons why you're gonna to want to just directly call a process versus doing something else. Um, and it's gonna involve like whether or not you um, have all of the information you need and if you need to like resolve for something first before you do the next thing. And so PowerShell is going to resolve from left to right which might be backwards now that I'm thinking about it on your screen from left to right. Um, so PowerShell is gonna resolve from left to right. And so we might want to resolve this first where first we filter out all of the objects where the name is zoom it and then we call get process on it versus getting all of the processes and then looking for the um, process called zoom it. And so each time you run uh, uh, any kind of like piping any kind of stringing things together, you're gonna wanna think about reducing the amount of work your computer is doing, or you potentially wanna think about that. And so instead of listing all of the things, maybe you only wanna grab the things with this name and then kind of go through there. We're gonna do another example of that in just a minute. So if that didn't make sense, we'll do another example. Here is a third example of that exact same call. 
command, okay? So we're doing here at the top, we're gonna grab a PowerShell object where the name is zoom it and pipe it to get process. Here, we're gonna call get process where the name is zoom it. Here, we're gonna call get process, but we're going to pipe that into the output of get process, which was that huge list that just kept scrolling all of the processes that are running. We're gonna pipe that into the command where object. And it's gonna specifically look for the column name or the type name. And if it equals, zoom it. Okay. And that's going to do the same thing. So now we have three commands that do the same thing, but the difference is here, when we get all of the processes and we pipe that into where object, this is doing a ton of work to get all of the processes and then pass it into another command who then has to go through them all and find the name. Whereas these ones are only looking through the, the get processes and finding specifically that name. So this one's almost doing kind of like double the work because we got to call two commands here. Awesome, someone has a suggestion for another um, resource for getting started with PowerShell 3 with Jason Helmick and Jeffrey Snover. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, I have not gone through that yet, uh, but yeah, thank you so much for sharing. I always appreciate it when we share um, resources with each other. If three things do the same thing, which one is the most efficient? It's really gonna depend on what you're doing. So in this case, um, probably the most efficient is this one because this dash name here is specifically going uh, for this particular commandlet. And so we're kind of doing the least amount of work. Whereas these other two are kind of going through, this is going through all of the, the objects and looking for zoom it. And this is gonna go take all of these processes and pass it into a separate um, command and then look for uh, for equality there. Great question. And notice that we just used this nice handy dandy little um, dash EQ here to test equality. So we can actually continue to do that and kind of explore these. So a string testing equality with some other string is going to result in false. So these are our Boolean operators. In bash, we just use the like equals, not equals, greater than, et cetera. Um, if you did wanna do some greater than, we could do GT60. So 50 greater than 60, nope. Um, 60 greater than 50, yep. 50 less than 60, yep. We can also do things like is S um, greater than T, because remember, it goes down to ASCII codes, right? Like it's all zeros and ones in the end. Um, no, but is uh, S greater than P? Yes, it is. All right. Um, all right, sorry, one second. Perfect. Um, no, we have not talked about the kill command yet. Well, technically, I mean, we did look at the all of the um, commands that we could run around process. So if you run get command with the parameter type process, you can see that stop process is there. Um, yes, you are feel feel free to ask any PowerShell questions. I may not have time to answer them here, but if you ask them, I will be able to um, follow up with more information on my recap video next week. Or it comes out on Monday. I'll be recording it tomorrow. All right, a couple more commands where we are gonna be doing some piping so that we can explore these a little bit more. So first of all, um, let's run this one here. So I'm gonna give you a, a second to kind of think about what this one, well, let's do, yeah, okay. So I'm gonna give you a second to kind of think about what this might be. Um, I did ban, I don't know why this is not stopping. Um, so I, I did, I definitely did, 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 
Oh, you know what? <sighs> Hang on one second, y'all. Let me, I'm sorry, I banned, I'm on my private account. Let me switch into that this account and I will do that right now. Apologies. Um, so I'm going to do, do, do. and there we go. The joys of live streaming, isn't it fun? All right, perfect. There we go. Um, they have been done. Okay, perfect. Apologies. I re I didn't realize I was on my personal account when I, I was like, block. And then it was like, yeah, blocking. Cool. Um, okay, so this one right here, uh, basically, we're going to be running get process. Remember, we're going from left to right. So we're going to be running get process. We're going to be getting a whole list of that process. And then we're specifically going to be looking at a name where we match this. So basically, it has to start with V, right? So here are all the processes that start with V. That's what that one's doing. We can do something similar here. Um, here is some real fun piping, so much so I have to zoom out. So we're going to get all of the processes, okay? So we're going to get that huge list of processes. Then we're going to select only that name column <laughs> of all of the processes. And we're going to take that huge long list. And then we're going to say only where the object name equals zoom it. Yay. Why did we not get all of the other pieces? So over here, when we ran it like this, we got all of these columns, right? We got the, the handles, we've got the, the how much CPU time it's been taking in seconds, the ID, et cetera. We don't get that here because we specifically only selected the name part of the object that was returned from get process. So we're gonna get a smaller amount back, right? This might be useful, but it isn't super efficient because we had to get all of the processes. Then we grabbed all of the processes only name column. And then we went down to grabbing um, grabbing this. Whereas we could have just done something like this. Um, sorry. Doop, doop. This to get that same name as the output. But this time we're only grabbing the zoom it process from the list of processes and then grabbing name. So select object is going to be doing less work here because select object is only selecting the object name on the zoom it process versus on all of the other processes. Yes. Thank you so much, Francisco. I appreciate this. Um, so Francisco gave this really good explanation here. Um, not necessarily for new users, but a commandlet could be an underlying function or could be pointing to a DLL file with C sharp code that will do the work and post the response. And thank you, Doug. Uh, it seems like there is a, a really great deep dive on PowerShell by the language designer, um, Bruce Payet. Is that how you say his name? I'm not positive. Thank you all so much. I really appreciate all of these additional resources and I'm sure everyone else watching um, does as well. All right. Um, yes, so we could have, have also done it like this and then it would be less work that is being done. Um, probably more, even more efficiently, not probably, but even more efficiently is to use the option for the get process command itself um, to first reduce the amount that we're getting in that. So we're not sending all of the list of processes to the where object, which is pretty much not necessary because we do have this option here and then selecting name, which we can do here. So this is really just a very high level introduction to this scripting. I mean, it's not the scripting. Actually, we're not building any commandlets here. But if you did want to build commandlets to kind of understand how objects are, are being passed between the different commands and how PowerShell is handling this piping, because it does make an impact on, on um, how quickly operations are happening or how much your machine is doing, et cetera. Other things that we can do, here's a really long one that we can check out. Again, I got to zoom out a little bit, um, but we can go, hello, Brazil. Um, awesome. 
Uh, so here we've got get process where object CPU is greater than 100. So it's been running for greater than 100, I think it's seconds, um, if I remember what was just above. Then we're going to sort the object CPU. So that that for the whole table, we're going to sort that column, basically, descending. And then we're only going to show the top three. So we're going to show the top three CPU intensive um, commands that are running or processes that are running. In my case, it's Teams, <laughs> which I totally have quit. I mean, it's been running for longer, but it's not running right now, which is hilarious. Um, and Edge, which obviously I'm running on multiple places, um, and then System. So these are my top running processes or CPU intensive processes. Um, and sorry, I uh, yeah, yeah, with their IDs and all of their information. What, uh, Bash does work on Windows. Uh, uh, we did a video on that last week, which you can find at ak.ms slash learn with Dr. G underscore videos. Um, and I use WSL and we're going to be doing a WSL video coming up. You can actually, um, check that one out at ak.ms slash LWDG slash WSL live stream. Um, the next three live streams that we're going to be doing are, uh, Unix shell commands, RESTful API, and then WSL. So you can check all of those out if you are interested. I'll put them down in the comments as well. All right, um, we're nearly coming to an end here. Yes, I can definitely put this command in chat. No problem. There is the command in chat and I'll put it over here in chat as well. And then I'm also gonna throw in all of those upcoming live stream links in the chat just in case anyone is interested. Um, a collection of SQL Server computer names and instance names. When I pipe that collection, I lose the list of instances from the central management server list. Ooh, good question. Um, no, I cannot show how to hack someone's webcam. Uh, yes, Teams is 90% of people's workload anything uh, uh, recently. Um, that's a good question around the SQL Server computer names and instance names. And then you pipe that collection and you lose the instance name. Um, I'm not positive. It'll probably depend on what you're running, um, like which commands and such. Uh, if someone knows a, a quick answer to that, I'm not positive. Um, but I can also take a note of that and see if I can follow up with you later. Um, so SQL Server um, computer instance name slash instance names uh, losing instance name. All right. PowerShell in a month of lunches with Don Jones and Jeff Hicks. Thank you so much, Doug. I really appreciate all of your help. Uh, with all of these um, additional resources. Apologies for speaking fast, especially towards the end of my streams. I tend to start to speak fast. Uh, this is on YouTube, so while not the best solution, so I apologize, you can rewatch it and slow down the speed, um, but I will be more mindful moving forward. So thank you for pointing that out. Um, perfect. The last thing I just wanted to mention, uh, there are other commands like being able to format. Um, so this command right here that I, I quickly went through um, was looking for anything with string, getting the members for them, and then formatting that in a kind of cleaner way. So if we, if we run this, we'll get here is the type name. This is type string. Um, it's part of the clone commandlet. It's a method. Um, and here is kind of the, the definition for that. Here, here's all of the string, all of our lovely string methods. Here are, um, yeah, these are just all of the methods related to the object string. I was trying to see if there were anything other than here is rather than a method, the, here are the um, just kind of like, oh, no, sorry, right here. There we go. Uh, properties, right? So we've got chars, which is a parameterized property um, or property uh, length, which is just kind of the property. We could have run that without the format list here and we would have gotten this.
All right. Um, all right. Yeah, I don't know what's up with the hacking. We're not doing hacking in this in this little. We're not hackers here. We're just learners here. So uh, apologies if if you came for the hacking. You're probably going to be disappointed. Um, we are at the end of our time, though. I do see one other question about executing PowerShell scripts remotely to many servers and capturing output locally to a file. Um, I think that's going to involve much more than just PowerShell, but rather kind of like whatever infrastructure you do have set up um, and and how those servers are connected, what you're using there. Um, but uh, 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 I that's what I've got for you there. And yes, thank you so much, Doug. I really appreciate all of the resources that you shared with everyone today. Um, I'll be sure to add a bunch of those in the comments for this YouTube video. And uh, we will be doing a recap. I took some notes on some questions. Um, but as always, if you do have other questions or um, wanna just share like, hey, I, I ran PowerShell for the first time. Awesome. Uh, feel free to connect with me. I'm Dr. Guthels on pretty much any social media. Um, and you can find all of our episodes um, at aka.ms slash learn with Dr. G as all of our kind of shorter pre-recorded episodes um, and links to, to these live streams and such uh, are at guthels.com slash Sarah. Uh, these are part of the What You Didn't Learn in School video series. So feel free to check them out. And as always, uh, we do have a survey and I would really appreciate it if you could fill it out because it helps us to see if there are any other um, things that you would want to hear about or if this is what you what you're interested in learning about. So definitely uh, fill that out. Just head over to aka.ms slash reactor slash survey with the event code 12884. And I just said that I would speak slower and I just said that super fast. I apologize. I apologize. I will be more mindful. Um, and goodness gracious, again, again. So we're going to, yeah. Apologies for this. Um, unfortunately, I did it as a timeout, so the timeout ended. Um, but yes, um, tweet that link, the survey link or the, oh, the the um, aka.ms. Yes, I can tweet that link. I will tweet that link. This one right here, the What You Didn't Learn in School video series. I will tweet that link right after this. Um, so. That is what I have for you all today. Um, thank you again so much. And I am looking forward to seeing you again in the future. Have a great rest of your day, evening, or morning, wherever you're coming from. Bye, everyone.